A common belief within the African diaspora concerning the relationship between Christianity and Africa is that Christianity came to be known amongst African people via oppression and colonialism. Christianity is one of the most popular religions amongst African and African descended people around the world. So the question is, how did African people come to know and embrace the message of Christianity? <laughs> What up, African world? It's Home Team here. And as always, remember to support the Home Team on Patreon to get full access to sources, courses, and exclusive videos. The link is in the description box below. For those who may not know, Christianity started in the Levant region, which is right in between Europe and Africa. When Europeans embraced Christianity, they began to popularize it, especially with their paintings of biblical figures during the Renaissance period. These biblical figures were assigned with European features, not only so the people can relate to them, but it also evolved to project an idea that the European phenotype is close to divinity. Christian art by Europeans became a powerful tool for European supremacy, especially during the colonial period. And as 21st century intellectuals in the black community revisited this past, it tended to paint the overall history and development of Christianity in an impressive light especially when it comes to its relationship with Africa. But let's actually follow the religious history of Christianity and find out how African people were introduced to it. The very first encounter with the continent and Jesus is actually found in the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 2 verses 14 through 15. So he got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, out of Egypt I called my son. So as we can see, according to the Christian Bible itself, Jesus fled to Egypt fleeing potential persecution from King Herod. The second encounter with Jesus and the continent was when Jesus was about to get crucified and a man from North Africa named Simon of Cyrene came to help him bear the weight of the cross. Interestingly enough, according to the Bible, one of Jesus' first experiences on earth was in Africa, and one of his last encounters was also with a man from Africa. During this time, there were many people from Egypt and other regions in North Africa that came to the Levant as merchants. So North Africans were literally there to witness the life of Jesus. Even though there were people from North Africa present in the Levant during the time of Jesus, what was the first official sign of a converted Christian in Africa? Well, the Christian Bible also makes mention of this. In the book of Acts chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, it states, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandaki. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. So the first official sign of a Christian in Africa was a Kushite official from ancient Nubia. The message of Christianity apparently penetrated all the way down to Kush, and a Kushite man accepted Christianity. The Christian Bible tells us that the Kushite was actually on his way to Jerusalem to worship. The conversion of this Kushite signifies the long and extensive history of Christian Africans in Nubia. As we can confirm historically, ancient Nubia harbored three Christian kingdoms, the kingdom of Nobatia, Makuria, and Elodia. Christianity in the kingdom of Nobatia began to take a stronghold around the 5th century the first officially recognized Christian king of Nobatia was King Silco. By the end of the 6th century, Mercuria had converted to Christianity. What's so significant about Mercuria is that this Christian nation literally stopped the Arabs from conquering for the south into eastern Africa and spreading Islam through conquest for quite some time. According to historian al Baladhuri, at the Battle of Dungalo, the Muslims found that the Nubians fought strongly 
and met them with showers of arrows. The majority of Arab forces returned with wounded and blinded eyes. It was thus that the Nubians were called the Pupil Smiters. One day, they came out against us and formed a line. We wanted to use swords, but we were not able to, and they shot at us and put out eyes to the number of 150. The kings of Makuria apparently took their religion very serious, as they even took on Christian names such as King Abraham, King Solomon, and King David. In fact, there's a tombstone from the Makurian king, King David. As we can see, the inscriptions are clearly Nubian script with obvious crosses on the bottom, advancing Christian imagery and symbolism. And our last kingdom is Alodia. The kingdom of Alodia was officially converted to Christianity in the 6th century. Alodia is described as being larger, wealthier, and even more powerful than Makuria, with the country covering a large region. Now this is where we get to Inner Africa. The first sign of Christianity in Inner Africa was actually in Ethiopia during the reign of the Aksumite Empire. Although Christianity existed long before the rule of King Azana of the Aksumite Empire, the religion took a strong foothold when it was declared a state religion in 330 AD. So how did Christianity come to Ethiopia? Funny story actually. After being shipwrecked and captured at an early age, Frumentius, a man from Lebanon, was carried to Aksum where he was treated well. It was Frumentius who converted King Azana to Christianity and the religion became official. So far we've documented the presence of Christianity in North Africa and its flow down into Eastern Africa, from Egypt all the way to Ethiopia. But what about Western Africa? How did Christianity come to that part of the continent? Well, there's a general idea that Christianity first came to Africa via colonialism, and that simply isn't true as we proved earlier. But when it comes to Western Africa, we assume this as well. However, Christianity actually entered Western Africa via trade with the Portuguese around the 15th century. To begin with, Africans in the West had a relatively positive trading relationship with the Portuguese. And when you're trading things, you're not only trading items, but you're also trading ideas. And it was in this context that the Congo Empire embraced Christianity in the 15th century. The unique thing about Congo was that there was a huge movement led by Kempo Vida to understand Christianity strictly from an African perspective because they began to realize the manipulation of the Portuguese. The Congo Empire has a very long and extensive history with Christianity that is very well documented. The Bakongo people were very much a part of the Christian world. So given this historical perspective when it comes to Africa, Christianity flowed into the continent very naturally as it did in other parts of the world. I mean, it only makes sense that Christianity would flow into Africa naturally as the birthplace of Christianity is literally right outside of Egypt. Well, I'm all out guys. If you like this video and would like to learn more, you can support the home team on patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey. Hey, hey.